Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to the GOW, the Generation Wrestling Podcast. I'm the franchise. He's the king. And with us today, we have a former TNA World Tag Team Champion, former TNA X Division Champion, current Impact Wrestling Superstar, Frankie Kazarian. Frankie, how you doing, brother? Doing well. How you guys doing? Oh, man. Enjoying this great Friday. How about you, man? Uh, same thing, brother. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Looking forward to talk to you about a bunch of different things. Uh, we know your time's limited. So uh, one of the things we really want to hit on, of course, is the upcoming Victory Road special next Friday, September 8th. And, of course, Impact 1000, September 9th. Uh, speaking of uh, Impact 1000, you were part of Impact during this original incarnation as TNA, you know, TNA nonstop Impact. A thousand episodes. A lot of TV shows can't say that, you know, and you, you've been there since the very beginning, not only as a superstar, but as Frankie Kazarian, the man, how does it feel to be a part of impact 1000 brother? Uh, it's, it's special. You know, this, uh, this isn't lost on me. I don't think it's lost on any of us. Uh, like you said, you know, uh, most episodic television shows are lucky if they get picked up for one or two seasons, uh, yeah. you know, we've been around for 20 years and almost a uh, thousand episodes. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's something to be, ele- to be celebrated. Cause I think it's good for, obviously it's good for the company, but it's good for the professional wrestling industry. It shows that the industry is strong and that the fan base uh, is still there the same way they've been there for the past 20 years. So uh, it's pretty cool. I think my debut episode was episode 51 because mm-hmm. I came in, I came in, I think uh, a week before the one year anniversary. So, to be here for a thousand is pretty special, man. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Uh, Kat, for, for you to be a part of the show for so long, what the, what would you tell yourself then? If you could tell yourself starting out then, what would you tell yourself now uh, uh, almost a thousand episodes later? Uh, I would, you know, I would all, all that same advice that all of us, our older selves could tell the younger guys, right. you know. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint, brother. You know, don't you know? If you want to be here for a long time, you know, don't go out and kill yourself. You know, learn how to learn how to be smart. Learn how to uh, learn how to treat this like a business, because you know, me like a lot of youngsters, my first few years, you know, I the wrestling part that kind of came natural and I picked that up. But the business aspect of this is very difficult to pick up. Some never do, sadly. So um, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, you know, work for longevity. Uh, you know, um, treat everybody with respect, uh, you know, conduct yourself uh, as the kind of man you want to be outside of the ring, you know, so, uh, you know, all those things, you know, that you're going to, you know, the same people that, uh, that kick your ass on the way up, they're going to kiss your ass on the way, whatever that saying is, all that yeah, stuff, yeah. man, just, you know, like, just, uh, you know, uh, I, I actually had a good, pretty decent head for, um, for what I wanted to do in this business and for longevity, so, but uh, still, I made a lot of mistakes, so I would try to correct those mistakes for sure. Gotcha. Go ahead, bro. Speaking, speaking of longevity in the business, like I said, you've been in the business well over, you know, 20 years. How much has not only the locker room, but the industry itself evolved over time since you've been in it to present day? A, a lot. I mean, if it's, it's so strange. If you look at wrestling, the landscape right now, and just look, say, five years ago, yeah, it's completely different. Mm-hmm. There's not there's not as many companies. There's it's it's just different. You know, if you look five years before that, it's very different. Now, if you look 25 years, which is when I started 1998, uh, you know, that was still kind of the tail end of the Wild West. Yeah, you know, man. the business was very different. Um, you know, it was still very protected, at least for me. Getting into a wrestling school wasn't easy. Finding a wrestling school wasn't easy. And once I got there, you know, there's a lot of people that didn't want you to learn because the business was protected. And uh, you know, now there's so much more accessibility. Uh, There's so many more opportunities for people to wrestle. There's so many more opportunities to watch business. The way we consume media has changed uh, light years from, you know, say the Monday night wars. Yeah. Uh, So it's, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of it, I, I, I really like a lot of it. You know, I kind of prefer things the way they were, but I like that. I'm, you know, I have one foot in the old school, one in the new, you know, because not a lot of us that can say that. So I'm very blessed to be in that position. You you say that. And I wanted to ask you, you know, there's only maybe a handful of you guys that were there. Uh, Eric Young, Gail Kim, uh, a handful that have been there that long to see the journey of impact TNA from then to now and to see the, the growth in talent. What is that for you? If just for you guys, just to see where it was, you being through it and then being back into it now 
and seeing these new talent, these these fresh younger men and women that are really knocking down the door for impact. Well, for me, it's very rewarding because uh, uh, yeah, I was there from the almost the very beginning, and I was there when we were hearing that we weren't going to be around for another two weeks, two months, yeah, another right. few years. Yeah. You know, and we were hearing that all the time. I don't know if people realize that it seemed like we were, or especially early on, we were always on the verge of of, of shutting the whole operation down. And you know, we really, really kind of got pissed at that, and we used that as a chip on our shoulder. And our entire locker room banded together, and we worked our ass off, and we put on the best shows possible. And I see that exact same attitude right now. Like this locker room is full of so many talented uh, younger men and women just killing it. And a lot of people that grew up watching uh, not only wrestling, obviously, but grew up watching Impact. So they mm-hmm. have a respect and a love for the company and its history. And it's 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 cool to see, man, kind of as the old guy sitting on the porch in my rocking chair. You know, seeing that it's it's pretty cool to look at, man. Okay, all right. Speak, speaking of pretty cool to look at, you know, he like he said it, Gail Kim, Kong, yourself. You know, you go back to the beautiful people. Speaking of, you got Angelina Love coming back. I know me personally, I didn't think I would see Gail step foot back in the ring this year. Now with her and Kong are coming back, then of course they're going to be in that huge match with two mystery opponents as well. When you heard that Gail was going to step foot, and of course Kong coming back. Personally, what was your reaction to that, seeing that Impact has always been revered for the way they treated and respected women's wrestling? Yeah, you're right. They have, you know, and I, I hope people understand that Impact really was the first company to really showcase female wrestling the way it's showcased now. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, when I heard Gail was coming back, look, I knew she she's stepped away and she had her run, but I know how competitive she is. Um, but on top of that, she's also, you know, you got to put her in the conversation of, greatest ever uh top five female wrestlers uh, you know in addition to being a good friend she's an amazingly gifted entering competitor and uh I'm, I'm very happy that she's coming back for this it's like it, it feels right her being there in the thousands episode because she's been so incredibly important not only to the women's division to the knockouts and impact she's been important to the entire company yeah. um, and now she's very important from a behind the scenes perspective but I mean, you can never uh, take away from her entering work because that's what put her on the map. And she was very, uh, in the formative years, she was one of the ladies that pushed hard for Impact Wrestling to start featuring um, with the women and to have a women's division. So uh, it's cool to see her back. It's, it's you know, it's special. It's special. I hope the fans in attendance realize they're seeing something that's pretty unique and pretty cool. I always wanted to ask this, and as you as someone who's been around long enough, the six-sided ring, what was the difficulty uh, of being inside of that ring? Uh, it, even though it was unique, it's the one thing that really uh, made Impact uh, step apart from other companies because no one has seen anything like that. And only a handful of people can really work well in it. What was the difficulty of that and why they went from it? Uh, so what was difficult about it for me, uh, yeah. was, uh, I, I got used to it. I adapted pretty quick. Uh, um, it's a little stiffer because, because the way the ring is built, um, you know, it's just, there's not as much, there's, you can still put suspension under obviously, but it just, it did, there wasn't as much give. Yeah. Uh, and for those that go to the top rope, you know, it's not, the angle was a lot wider. So your footing on the top rope was kind of weird in terms of standing on the top rope, trying mm-hmm. to find your balance. Um, those things made it a little difficult. Uh, the positives of it is, yes, it looked different. Uh, mm-hmm. You could really cut cool angles, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, like, like a, like a, you know, like a wide receiver going over the middle and, and then doing an out route. Like you really cut yeah. some cool angles. I thought that was cool. But uh, again, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a traditionalist. I like, uh, like a four sided ring, but at the time I thought it was a great move for us to have that. No, no, you're good. You're good. Good. Okay. Uh, speaking of being a, t- a traditionalist, Victory Road is coming up, right? And that's really become a staple uh, event here in Impact. The card is looking good. We got Kenny King versus Tommy Dreamer, career versus title, digital media championship. We got the walking weapon himself, Josh Alexander versus Steve Macklin, Bully Ray versus PCO, another OG in the game. We got one of the greats, Deanna Perrazzo versus another returning great, Jordan Grace. We got the Rascals versus the Motor City Machine Guns going back to that TNA era. Looking at this car right now, my question to you would be, it's two-parter. Which match do you think is the eyes on favorites to be matched tonight? And which match do you think is a sleeper with that same capability? 
Looking at the card right now, I mean, uh, Guns versus Rascals. What can you say about both those teams? You know, yeah. just yeah. that's going to be uh, tag team wrestling personified. All those gentlemen are incredible athletes. I go back with the Guns 20 years. Love those guys. The Rascals, you know, I've really just got to know them recently. But, you know, they're, they're such unique move sets, uh, such big personalities. Uh, I really like those dudes. So. Uh, that has a, a, a good chance to be matched tonight. Josh Alexander and Macklin, I mean, just Josh's first singles yeah. match back. I yeah. mean, two just wrecking balls in there, beating the piss out of each other. Uh, that's going to be great. Uh, psh, Deanna, uh, what were you talking about? Deanna and Jordan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, there's a reason that our ladies main event a lot of pay-per-views and a lot of television shows is because they can, yeah. you know, flat out. So, okay. uh, honestly, any of those three could be match of the night. Um for a sleeper man, you know, just on emotion, I'll talk about Kenny King and Tommy Dreamer. You yeah. know, you got a, you got a guy like Dreamer who's, you know, bleeds yeah. professional wrestling and he's putting his career on the line. And you got a guy, a talent like Kenny King, who, you know, uh, I see a lot of myself in Kenny, a guy that kind of has a chip on his shoulder, a guy that still has a lot to prove and a guy that still has a lot of gas in the tank and can still go. And, you know, he's looking to make a name for himself, an even bigger name. So that could be the sleeper. Through all the years of, of impact and all the people that have come in and out of it, we are recently seeing that the OGs are coming back. And not only are they coming back, but they are they are putting the dream to their stories. And they are like as in uh, Chris Saban and, and um, Alex Shelley, they're coming back and they're winning these championships that people didn't never think they did. Shelley won the world. He's the world champion. And I and I want to put this out there because I'm I've been wondering when you are going to come out and do this. When is Frankie going to? come take that world championship because it's, it's well overdue, bro. I appreciate you saying that. I mean, look at, I, you know, it's no secret now. I chose to be here. You know, I, I left where I was previously and I chose to be here. This is where I wanted to come. And I'd be lying if I, you know, said I didn't come here to become world champion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one thing that's eluded me. You know, I've held many titles. I've been very blessed to do that. Mm -hmm. But to be the world champion of a major wrestling company, that was the dream since I was, seven, eight years old. And uh, dreams don't have an expiration date, man. So that's why I'm here. With that being said, how much longer do you have in this business? I, I, you, I don't see you quit no time soon <laughs> for our injury. I don't see it leaving no time soon. But just how, how much farther does Frankie have in his mind that in your body can keep up with this? It's weird to say, man. God, sometimes I wish I I wish I didn't feel as good as I do, <laughs> okay. you know, because yeah. God, because I, I feel like I'm I, I feel like I'm moving well. I feel like I'm putting on the best performance I ever have. I'm still having, you know, in, uh, incredibly competitive and great wrestling matches. I feel good. My conditioning is good. Uh, you know, man. So, you know, I, I learned a few years back not to kind of put, you know, an, an end date on it because it's like, you know, I could say five years and five years, maybe I'm still feeling yeah. good. Still right. got that itch, you know? So it's like, I'm going to do it until, if, if I'm ever out there and I feel that I'm not giving the crowd Frankie Kazarian at its best, then I will consider maybe stepping away. But uh, at this point in my career, I'm still giving, I'm still giving the crowd at home and the crowd watching live Frankie Kazarian at his very best. So I'm hearing Frankie Kazarian world champion 2024. I like it. I like That's it. it. I like That's it. it. Yep. Go ahead, Frankie, as, as we get ready to wind down, I got a couple more things for you. I want to have a little fun in this next segment. It's called Word Association. I got six words for you. And for anybody who don't know what that is, I'm going to give Frankie six words. He's going to say the first thing that comes to mind. Frankie, you ready? Okay, so do I just have to say one word, or is it a sentence, or what? Because whatever, whatever comes to your mind, if you want to say a sentence, a sentence, usually it's gotcha. one word, but you, okay. you demand I'll, I'll, it out. I'll try to keep it to one word, but I have no promises. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries. All, All right. First word. X division. Innovation. Mm -hmm. Knockouts. Uh, pioneers. Awesome Kong. Um, uh, underrated, uncredited monster. Impact Wrestling. Survivor. Mm. Frankie Kazarian. Mm. Um boy uh a guy that wants to leave professional wrestling better than how he found it Damn, and like just that. to be a little selfish i like this generation of wrestling <laughs> generation of wrestling my, my new favorite podcast my new favorite <laughs> 
And we appreciate you, baby. I'll fan. tell you my, what. My new number one. If you weren't, if you weren't going to be the new world champion, you damn sure could be a politician. There we look. <laughs> flattery, flattery gets me everywhere, man. Oh, absolutely, man. King. Before we wrap up and finish some last housekeeping, man. Anything else, Frankie? Before we get out of here, I just just want to just say, uh, give. I, I want to. I'm learning to appreciate more because we're having a lot of loss in our business today Mm -hmm. and definitely just want to give you your flowers, man, uh, for watching you over the years. You've had some great matches. Uh, I just, the, the, just to see somebody with the passion that you have and the way you go out and you work ring. And yeah, we, I I remember watching matches where I can understand where you say, maybe you shouldn't have did this move or did that move. But then again, it was a great match to watch and and you kill it. So I just want to, say thank you, man, for what you do to the business, man, because I have watched a lot of your matches and have been very satisfied, and I'm going to be waiting to see that world champion uh, Frankie next year. I appreciate you saying that, man. That means a lot. That's not lost on me, man. Like you said, you know, it's we've lost so many, you know, legends and guys that were still at the top of their game, and it's sad. So, yeah, man, I, I pour my heart and soul into every match, and uh, I'm going to continue doing so. So I appreciate that. And man, most Frank, definitely, man, we look forward to it. Before we get out, where can people find you on social media? And if they want to tune in and watch the Victory uh, Rose special next week as well as Impact 1000, how can people watch it? Where can they find tickets? Uh, tickets are available, available at impactwrestling.com. Um, I believe uh, on the Impact uh, uh, Impact Plus app, you can check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find me on uh, uh, social media, Frankie Kazarian on Twitter, Frankie Kazarian Official on Instagram. Those are the two. Um, most active on and uh, usually talking a lot of rock and roll, baseball, sports, boxing, football, uh, a little bit of wrestling, but uh, try to keep it entertaining. <laughs> Speaking of rock and roll, you got a band too, right? Yeah, I got a band, my band Gutter Candy. We actually have a gig tomorrow in San Bernardino, California, locally out here. Uh, a couple gigs coming up this month. And um, yeah, that's my other, that's my other passion project, man. Kicking ass and rocking out. I like that's it. it. I that's like it. it. <laughs> yes, sir. And with that being said, Frankie, again, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of Generation Wrestling Podcast. I'm the franchise. He's the king. And he's your future world heavyweight champion. Frankie, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.